All right, so this is gonna be another video about limit properties, only this time we're gonna be talking about the dividing out technique. And the dividing out technique basically involves dividing out common factors. Now, why would you wanna divide out common factors? Well, I'm gonna show you why using an example right here. Why would you want it? Okay, so to do this, first thing I'm gonna think about is, okay, can I use direct substitution? Because that would be the easiest possible way of doing that. So I'm gonna see if I can plug in this negative three uh, in for x here and see if it's continuous. If it's continuous, then I can just plug it in and then I can find the limit through direct substitution. Okay, so if I plug negative three into this numerator right here, I would get nine plus negative three. So nine plus negative three, which is six minus six, would be zero, so I'd have zero on top, so we're in good shape. And then if I plug negative three on the bottom, I'd have negative three plus three, which is zero. So I'd end up with a zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. So if you ever see a zero over zero, it's called indeterminate. So we cannot do a direct substitution with this because we're dividing by zero. But what this zero over zero indeterminate form tells us is that we may be able to use the dividing out technique to solve this limit algebraically. That way you do not have to use a graph or use a table and sometimes the problem asks you to do it algebraically and that's what you're gonna to have to do okay so we found out that it's indeterminate that's one of the first steps that you're gonna to do to um, figure out if you need to use the uh, that you may possibly be able to use the dividing out technique in this case we're going to because it's an example for this okay first step that you're gonna to want to do for the dividing out technique since it involves dividing out common factors we're gonna to want to factor the numerator and the denominator so we're gonna do that right now Okay, so this top, this numerator right here on top is going to be quadra it's quadratic. So if you remember your factoring rules, rules for quadratic, you need to find two numbers that multiply to get negative six and add to get one because that B value is one and then that C value for the quadratic is negative six. So those two numbers would be three and negative two. So I'm going to factor this out like so. The limit as X goes to negative three and it's gonna be factored out X minus two over x plus three. Okay, so if you multiply these two numbers together, you'd get this quadratic over here. Okay, then we're dividing by x plus three, so I'm going to be dividing by x plus three. Okay, the next step that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to divide out the common factors. That's why it's called the dividing out technique. So x plus three divided by this x plus three over here, this would cancel to be one over one. So now I'm gonna rewrite this here so we have the limit as x goes to negative three of x minus two. Okay, now you should notice that this is continuous everywhere, including negative three, so all we have to do is plug in the negative three into this function right here, and then we end up figuring out the limit. So we'll have negative three minus two. Okay, well negative three minus two is negative five, and that ends up being our limit of this function as x gets closer to negative three. So that's the dividing out technique. The most important things to remember is you have to have that indeterminate form in order to uh, be able to use the dividing out technique and it doesn't always work. We're gonna go over another uh, example of when this indeterminate form comes in handy um, with another technique uh, technique called a rationalizing technique uh, for when you get indeterminate. Okay, so if you have any questions about this, let me know.